This is the Spurs Cast with your host, Paul Garcia. Welcome back to another episode of the Spurs Cast. On today's episode, I will be joined by by a NBA editorial director for Fansided, Josh Paredes. Josh and I will discuss the Spurs in their last two games, Charles Bassey's play off the bench, Trey Jones running the point, and Zach Collins heading to the injured list. Let's jump right into this episode with Josh. Josh, how are you doing? Pretty good, Paul. Happy to be here as always. I love the new intro. Good job, Joe. A little early shout out for him. <laughs> yes, yes. Joe definitely gets us pumped up for that episode. Okay, Spurs cast sure. listeners, if you listen to the last episode with Bruno Passos, you all know that my voice was going through a, through a transition. And so unfortunately, I did find out that a few days later that I did have an upper respiratory infection. So luckily, I'm on the other side of it now. My voice is actually coming back. But this is why it's a little strained right now. So, um, you know, it'll hopefully be back by the next episode. But thanks again, Josh, for taking, for taking some time to, to uh, discuss the Spurs. All right. So Josh and I are recording this on a uh, Thursday evening. So let's jump right into this. The Spurs have played two games since um, the last Spurs cast episode. They did, unfortunately, go 0-2. Let's begin back um, on, on, I believe it was Monday against Denver. Yeah, at home against, against Denver. So the Spurs lose this game by just six points. Again, a very close game. They, Denver was favored by seven and a half. The Spurs got the game to crunch time despite falling down by, by 11 points. So much better effort by San Antonio, considering that they had just been blown out in Denver on the road that previous Saturday. Uh, their top five players for San Antonio, you had Trey Jones leading the way with 20 points, three rebounds, and nine assists. You had Yaka Pertle providing 4.7 rebounds, nine assists, and uh, three blocks. Keldon Johnson puts up 30 points. Uh, he has five rebounds and two, two assists. Devin Vassell, 17 points, three rebounds, and four assists, and he, and he got his starting spot back in this game. And then Josh Richardson off the bench with 22 points, three rebounds, and three assists. What were your thoughts there in that game, uh, Josh? I mean, both. I feel like there's a pattern when I'm going to be on that the Spurs go on a bit of a losing streak dating back to last season. Um, but maybe this season it's a good thing probably in the long run. I don't know. Um, but as far as how they played, I, I don't think you can really fault much of, of you know how it transpired obviously uh, denver and memphis are better teams they're going to be fin- finishing with better records this season um but to see you see what pop's saying after the games he's very encouraged by how they're playing i really love to see how they're distributing the ball it's something that sean mentioned uh in the last game during the broadcast was um i, I actually when they had tony parker on there he said like having good habits is what you want to establish so, like, the talent might not be there fully, but if you have those habits established already with this roster and then you start to see these leaps that guys like Devin and Keldon and even Trey are taking, and then you add someone nice into the mix later, um, they're really, they're, it's very encouraging to see what they've been doing, how they've been playing, even if it's not resulting in, in wins lately. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree with you there, especially the fact that they, again, they came back and battled against Denver when Denver, you know, they could have just, you know, fallen again once they fell behind by 11. All right, let's go to the, the, the most recent game on Wednesday. The Spurs hosted the Memphis Grizzlies for the first time this season. And this is a really entertaining game. The Spurs took the Grizzlies to overtime and they had multiple chances to win it in regulation and in overtime. Uh, but they did unfortunately lose by two points in overtime. Memphis was the favorite again by six points. Um, and the Spurs, you know, you have to give them credit because they went, they felt, they fell behind by 14 points in that first quarter, and they could have easily, you know, this could have turned into a 20 point game, 30 point game. But no, they, they battled back, and again, they took the Grizzlies to overtime. So your your five leading players here were Yaka Pertle with 22 points, nine rebounds, and four assists. Trey Jones, 11 points, four rebounds, and 11 assists, a double double for Trey. Uh, Devin Vassell, 22 points, three rebounds, and six assists. Keldon. Uh, had 16 points, eight rebounds, and four assists. And then a guy who we're going to talk about a little bit later, Charles Bassey off the bench with a strong game, 10 points, six rebounds, and two assists. What are your thoughts on this game, um, this nail-biter against Memphis? Yeah, I mean, as somebody that's kind of rooting for these young guys, it's, it was hard to see that ending, how it ended. Um, but again, very encouraging effort. Um, Memphis is just has been a really tough matchup for the Spurs. I think they've won like five or six in a row at this point against them. Yeah. And huge reason is John Morant. What I did like more is, you know, John Morant got his, but I felt like last season he just got to the rim and did anything he wanted at all times. Any pick and roll was just his. And the Spurs, although we'll talk about how their defensive numbers aren't great, I feel like they have a better they have a better roster to handle guys like him. I think having Sohan out there, switchable guys like that, it helps prevent those so many pick and roll. Uh, breakdowns that they had and you know giving up like 50 points or whatever it was to jaw last year so 
I, I think it, again, an encouraging thing. It it is not great to see that um, Keldon and Devin missed those, especially Keldon. His was just in and out. It was just very unfortunate, but it is good to see that they are stepping up and taking those shots without hesitation. That's what you want to see, especially so early, because it's going to come in handy later in the season. Yeah, even like just going back to Devin's shot, I mean, the fact that, again, it didn't go in, but like the fact that he could get separation from the two defenders and still get like a pretty clean look off, you know, even though it's a, you know, falling to your side to kind of three, which again, if he's able to do that right now, at least creating that kind of shot in these kind of moments, that, that's, a, that's a big, you know, a growth a spurt for him. It looked so, online too. It looked like just from the broadcast, yeah. it was like, oh, that's good. Oh, that's very close. <laughs> Yeah, just to get just to get that separation against yeah. two defenders. I mean, that was yeah. I mean, you have to give him credit there, even though of course it's, it's going to take time uh, for him. All right, so now where do the Spurs stand? Um, they are now five and seven overall for the season through twelve games. They are on a five game losing streak. Again, that sounds really bad, but again, when you took when, when you look at the context of what Josh and I just said here, that the fact that they could have won these two games against Denver and um, and Memphis and maybe been um, you know you know not not five and seven at the moment, maybe six and six at, at this time. Uh, you know, offensively, they've improved a little bit now. They're 20th on offense. And then defensively, I think they improved by like one mark from the last episode. They were like dead last. And now they're 29th. Nice. But they showed some strides there uh, in these two games that they can be a, a pretty, um, you know, have, have some good moments on defense like Bruno and I had talked about a week before. All right. So, Josh, now let's transition to our second topic. There is some some injury news for the Spurs, unfortunately. So they already have Blake Wesley on the injured list. And now, unfortunately, the team announced that Zach Collins is joining Wesley on the injured list. Um, on Tuesday, the Spurs announced that uh, Collins underwent an MRI that confirmed a non-displaced fracture of the fibula head. That's, that's a part of the knee joint. Uh, the team will provide updates on his return to the court as appropriate. Jeff McDonald of the San Antonio Express News did report that Collins could be out for up to a month is what they're looking at looking at right now. And then uh, Malachi Branham, we've seen that he really hasn't been playing ever since the team got healthy again uh, in the guard wing rotation. And so because of that, they've actually sent him to, to Austin to get some minutes um, in the G League. What, what are your thoughts on, on Zach's um, injury? And then Branham already um, headed to Austin. Yeah, so as far as uh, Zach, and first, you know, you've been doing this a long time. Have you ever heard of a, a non a fracture of a fibula head before? No, I saw the, the, the fibula head part. I was like, what? I, I didn't even know. That. I just tweeted it, and then I was like, I had to go look at People were talking, oh, it's knee, it's knee joints or something. I guess it's maybe at the top, I would assume, yeah, that, going by context. But from what I've seen, yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, Matthew Tynan earlier was said that, like, there is a wide range of recovery for that. So we don't really know. So that's especially unfortunate for him. We know his injury history and it's, you know, it's never his fault. You know, it, it could just be, um, they're all just unfortunate instances. I don't even remember how this one happened or if there was a specific thing, but um, bottom line is it's going to be next man up as it usually is. And, you know, we'll get into that later with Bassey because it is a silver lining that we're seeing. He will have more of a chance, um, but Collins just got to hope he again, doesn't get discouraged. He came back looking pretty good defensively, you know, this and hitting some threes and everything before that. So kind of like Wesley, it's an unfortunate timing that he was kind of hitting his groove. And then yep. that happened with Branham. I mean, smart move. I don't really, I, I feel like, you know, he wasn't ready to, for those starter minutes whenever he had to do that. Um, and with those injuries, he, his, his shot, you know, I think he was like a, 50 40 90 guy in college or, or very near that and so i i know he has a good jump shot a smooth yeah. one it just wasn't really working for him yet so maybe just getting that confidence in austin before he gets real court time is you know it's a no-brainer i think yeah and just on, on what i would say there is that as we've seen these last two games pop is really um uh, trim the rotation down, especially that guard wing rotation. He's really just going Trey Jones, Keldon, Devin, uh, Doug McDermott, Josh Richardson, and then and then like we saw, he put Roman Langford in. But you know, he's really just sticking with with the very um, you know he, he likes to have Devin or, or Keldon on the floor at all times. So so he's really trimmed that rotation. So there really isn't any minutes for like a, you know backup shooting guard slash small forward kind of a player. Maybe there is a, a, a point guard minutes, but again, there's they don't have like a point guard on the, on the team aside from Trey Jones. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of understandable um, that, that they sent him to, to Austin this early. All right, so now you just mentioned uh, his name. Charles Bassey has, has, you know, really, really shined right now. And, it's again, I do want to warn that it's only been three games, uh, but he's really playing well for San Antonio right now um, off the bench, with especially with Zach Collins getting injured. He's kind of gotten into those minutes. So I'm going to just pull up the screen real quick so because I know I'm going to read some stats here. I'm going to make sure Spurs cast. If those, of us, those of you all that watch it on, on YouTube can see the stats. Okay, here we go. So Charles Bassey um, has been getting some of those minutes. Again, it's only been three games. Uh, right now, in 15 minutes off the bench, he's averaging seven points, six rebounds, one assist, three fouls, one steal, 
uh, zero turnovers and one block. 69% of his shots are coming in the paint with 62% of his attempts near the rim. So that's a good thing. He's not he's not something for like floater range shots. He's more so trying to, if he has to shoot, he's going to take his shots near the, like that dunk layup range. Um, and then on defense, I mean, he really pops off the page compared to his teammates. Uh, he sticks out on, on deflections, steals, contested shots, blocks, defensive rebounds. Uh, but he does foul a little too much compared to uh, what we're seeing in the early data. So what are your thoughts, Josh, on how Bassey's been playing? And again, we do want to warn that it's only been three games that he's played in. Yeah, I mean, that that's safe to warn that because it's it's so little, so few games. But you can see it already when you watch him. And he just has so much energy and he he kind of knows where to be and where to position himself and like on like defensively, I believe that's how he stood out mostly in college. He he's just like he has some some big time blocks and and he's just somebody that kind of like it, it it's very beneficial that they were able to get him uh, from Philly that ended up, um, you know, not really giving him a shot. Funny thing about that is, um, I, you know, I, I shared something that Sean Elliott said on Twitter. Um, he said it during the broadcast yesterday. He basically said, like, get him a, a hotel or something because he's not going to yes, go back to Austin. <laughs> and uh, today I'm seeing some responses from Sixers fans kind of going after Doc Rivers. Like, why did you not give this guy a shot? Look at him. Like, he's already getting... Uh, making a difference down in San Antonio. So, um, yeah, that, you know, he's an example of taking advantage of an opportunity and he's doing it. And I think he's going to continue to do it. Uh, you know, the fouling too much, you know, it's the same thing with how well he's doing. It's, it's going to kind of regress to a mean here, I think. And, um, but I just like what I'm seeing overall with his energy and his just like feel for the game and, and where to be. Yeah, and I would just say, you know, that's something to watch is, of course, we, we do think Zach Savitz is going to come back at some point, um, you know, within the next month or two. So, um, you know, he, those minutes won't always be there for him. But but again, uh, you know, if he continues to play well and if the Spurs are running out of games here, you know, they, they have to consider, you know, what, you know, how do they keep him on a long-term contract instead of just his, his G League two-way? Because I believe you can only have like 45 to 55 games um, in the NBA with that type of deal. But again, that's a, that's a question for down the road. And if they needed to, they'll probably wave somebody like Jordan Hall to give him a, a roster spot. So again, uh, Charles Bassey is playing well. He's earning that opportunity right now um, with, with Zach Collins out. So again, we'll see if Pop continues to go to go to him as the backup five. So far, he has uh, through two games that, that Zach has been out. There's always those Pirtle rumors too. So he could yes. get even more of a, oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> some more minutes. Really well too. All right. So our, our last topic, let's talk about just, just, I know that Bruno and I had just recently talked about all the starters, but I really want to spend some time on Trey Jones um, running the point because, um, you know, he, he's a very quiet player out there. You don't you really notice him a lot, but he's actually doing some productive things. And I made a model this off season where like, I'm trying to like find out, you know, who are some of the most impactful players. And he always tops in like, like the top four for the Spurs. I mean, he really, the, the, those assists are very quiet, but he's getting them for the team is he's rebounding. He's, you know, he's all over the place. Um, so let's just talk about, let's like kind of do a little deep dive into Trey Jones, how he's been doing here through um, 12 games. Uh, so he's played 31 minutes tonight. He's getting a lot of minutes now. He's, he's, um, and these are averages. He's averaging about 13 points. So he's the third leading scorer on the team behind Kelton and Devin. Uh, he, he's, he's collecting four rebounds a game, um, six, six assists leading the team in that category, which is what, which, which is what we would expect. Um, two fouls. So not too many fouls, one steal, um, which is first on the team and then two turnovers. Um, 68% of his shots are coming in the paint. 23% of his shots are from the three point line, which is a huge improvement for him and 9% of his shots from the mid range. So what does that look like compared to last year? We're seeing that he's, he's taking off a little bit of the paint shots. So 73% have, have um, is what he shot from last year in terms of attempts at the paint. He, he's trimmed down his mid range from, from last year. Last year was 14% for mid range. And we've seen that growth from the three point line where, where, um, oh, sorry, sorry. Three point line. He's it's um it was fourteen percent last year. Now it's 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 uh, ballooned up to nine percent more, so twenty three percent, and then twelve percent of his shots last year from the mid range. He's kind of decreased his mid range attempts. So again, we see that um he's definitely taking the three now that now that defenses are giving it to him. Uh, he's been efficient near the rim. So when he goes when he's attacking really close to the uh, at the defense, we saw some some crazy layups against Memphis just yesterday. Uh, he he's efficient in the rim. Uh, he's also efficient from the corner three and on his wide open threes. He's been efficient as well. He's been accurate. Defenses, we do see, of course, that they, you know they're not scared of him from three. They don't trust that shot yet. So, they, so seventy-three percent of his shots are are attempted wide open from three. And then uh, we we do want to note that he has made a three in all but two games this season. So, so again, he's continuing to take those threes in crunch time. Again, he's it's, it's a very small sample size of four games. 
Um, he's been really good at the free throw line, four or four from the free throw line. Uh, but his, in terms of taking care of the ball, he's had a little bit of trouble there, two assists to four turnovers. He is the leader in drives on the team uh, behind. Uh, he's ahead of Keldon and Devin. When he does drive the ball, what's weird is you would think he's a passer first, but no, he actually attempts shots more. So he's actually more aggressive when he actually has to drive in against the defense. Uh, and then he passes second. He actually takes care of the ball pretty well when he drives in. And then as far as defensively amongst the Spurs' as guards and wings, he stands out pretty well in a lot of areas in deflections, steals, contested shots, and defensive rebounds. And then lastly, I just wanted to see, you know, I went to cleaning the glass. And I wanted to see, you know, where does he rank? Does Is there anywhere he really pops off the page compared to other point guards across the league? And so there was one stat, which is, it's not, not a great stat, but you kind of expect it because it's, it's a Trey Jones kind of shot. Uh, he's in the 97th percentile among point guards in frequency of shots from the short mid-range, which is like that floater area. And unfortunately, he's not he's not that efficient at the shot. But again, be, because of his size, that's kind of what you expect. He has to get those floaters off against the bigs as he's driving in against them. So what are your thoughts, Josh, on how Trey Jones has been playing through 12 games to start this year? I know you're a huge fan of the floaters, uh, <laughs> historically. <laughs> Actually, just today I checked the Spurs are number three in, in makes and floater makes. So, so. Yeah, it's like that's Although, not good probably, but I mean, like, I guess it's points. <laughs> they're um, 10 in range, so they're no longer taking mid-range this team. True. Yeah. Um, they really have up their you know, threes overall. Um, I'll touch on a few things here. Um, I just feel like just watching him, he looks so much more confident and he's just smart. He's a smart player. He's like a Popovich kind of point guard. <clears throat> you mentioned the turnovers. He's he's always limiting those. I think like him and his brother like led the league in like assisted turnover ratio last season or something. And I don't know if it's anything like that right now. Maybe not, but I wouldn't be surprised if near the end of the season it's it's a similar thing. He's just very cerebral with it. He he knows kind of he knows how to set up people without making dangerous passes. Um, <clears throat> and and as far as like driving to the hoop, he he's showing some bursts, especially like in the open court. Like you'll see, and I think there were some even against Memphis where I didn't expect him to just like barrel in there. And it, it, there's some. They even mentioned there was a little Tony Parker in him because Tony was, you know, on the broadcast joining. Yeah. And he, he just said, he mentioned that, his, you know, his floater looks a little different because Tony's was more of a teardrop, kind of like John mm-hmm. Morant's is. And, and um, yeah, I, I, I like his his little floater as long as he kind of takes it whenever the defense gives it to him and doesn't really force it. Um, mm-hmm. As far as the threes, that's kind of surprising to me. <clears throat> I feel like him and Sohan are are shooters where it's like it, it's either going to go in or hit the backboard only <laughs> like yeah. they don't really have that reliable form that you that you like always trust it's going to go in but mm-hmm. it's either a swish or it's going to be like way off and 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 that might not be the best thing but you know with Sohan give him time and with Trey Jones he's he's showing you said made a three at least in all but two games that's that's encouraging at least you just want to be able to have the defense respect you in the perimeter, and they if they make enough of those, they're not going to leave them wide open. They'll open the lane for Devin and Keldon. So he's playing his role perfectly. I, I'm very pleasantly surprised by um, how he's playing, and I think you know his this starting point guard role is is pretty much his right now. And then two things I want to mention is like, he's just like the perfect uh, compliment to have on the floor uh, alongside Ke- Kelton and Devin, because he doesn't really get in their way. Like, again, he lets them be the guys who, who need to attack off dribble handoffs and off the pick and roll kind of sets a lot of times. Um, and then he can also, you know, drive in and then, and then and kick out to them. And then just defensively, one thing I noticed is that he's really physical with other guards. Like he really gets into them and you really see that even like, I know that, you know, Jaw had a great game yesterday, but even there were certain possessions where he kind of cut Jaw, uh, Jaw's um, driving lanes off, you know, a few times. And again, it's, it's no one can stop Jaw, but just the fact that he's able to do that uh, against some of the point guards at times. And we have seen that because of his size, I think he's like 6'3". Uh, point guards do try to go after him. We saw like uh, in that first game against Denver where, where um, who, who's their point guard? Jamal Murray, like, just like four or five possessions in a row, he wanted to, to post up trade down. So he's he's met with that adversity, but again, he's really physical from what I've seen against against players. He really gets into them. So again, he, I think that yeah, I think he's been he's been uh, it's been a good start for him this year as he spurs his um, starting point guard, uh, considering you know the direction that they are headed in for this season. So yeah. Spurs cast listeners, I want to say thank you to Josh for, for joining me here on this episode of the Spurs cast. If you want to follow his work, please follow him at Josh. 810 on Twitter. So again, at Josh810. Uh, thanks to Josh for joining me on this episode of the Spurs Cast. I also want to say thank you to Joe Garcia for mixing and producing this episode. From all of us at Project Spurs, stay safe and have a great day.